My name is Andre Algauer. I'm the client service manager here at Trading Central. And firstly, I would like to welcome and thank you all for joining us for this webinar on building a trading strategy with the help of technical analysis advanced. Today's webinar is brought to you by Trading Central and Mesa's investment company. Just to give you a brief background, Trading Central is a leading uh, investment research provider to financial markets professionals with a third year track record founded and run by experienced traders and analysts. Certified performance and award winning models like you can see on this slide with me. Trading Central award winning investment research provider founded in 1999 with offices in Paris, London, New York, and Hong Kong. Registered an investment advisor with the U.S. Securities Exchange Commission, SEC, the SFC, and AMF compliant. Certified member of the Investor Site Research Association, promoting independent opinion free of banking conflict of interest. Our clients include over 100 investment banks, asset managers, brokers, in over 35 countries. Clients include Barclays, UBS, Deutsche Bank, Morgan Stanley, New Edge, and BlackRock. Today's webinar will be presented by our analyst, Cyril Berkut, who is a senior technical analyst at Trading Central. He covers all asset classes, intermarket analysis for US and Latin America institutional buy side clients. In regards to his education, Ciro uh, received his master's degree on finance from the IGR, IAE, Institut de Gestion de Rene. He is qualified as MSTA, Society of Technical Analysts member, and uh, his experience prior to joining Trading Central. Um, Ciro served as a technical analyst at Societe Generale, CIB. Uh, portfolio Manager at KN Private Banking and equi Equity Analyst at EXA Investment Managers. Ciro provides chartist and mathematical approaches from intraday trading to swing trading and long-term investment from institutional and private banks. He is regularly quoted in Bloomberg articles. So now I'd like to pass the word uh, to our analyst Ciro Bickhut who will start his presentation. Thanks. Oh, hello, hello everyone. So let's start with the with our presentation. Okay, just a quick word about uh, Trading Central methodology. Uh, Trading Central combines uh, complementary approaches to assess uh, directional moves and price targets. Uh, we have a chartist approach, which refers to the uh, analysis of technical patterns uh, and volumes. Uh, a lot of mathematical indicators exist in technical analysis. They are used to give uh, an indication of the strength of, of a trend. They are also used to indicate uh, changes uh, in trend and uh, reversal trend si signals. Only a part of them are used in the work of the analyst at, uh, at Trading Central, um, like uh, Bollinger Bands, uh, Fibonacci numbers, uh, MACD, RSI, stochastics, uh, volumes, volumes, and uh, moving averages. We think it's necessary to, to combine the information uh, provided by uh, technical analysis to form, uh, to form an opinion, and especially because our charts and mathematical approaches match requirements of various uh, investment styles, from uh, intraday trading to, to, to long-term investments. So this is a, a quick presentation of uh, the Trading Central methodology. So now we are focused on how to build uh, trading strategy with the help of technical analysis. And let's start with key elements for successful trading strategy. Uh, actually, uh, the, the, the main focus is which question you have to, to, ask, you, to ask you before defining a, a trading strategy. Uh, the most important questions is, uh, of course, is on the asset I want to trade. Is it bullish or bearish? Is the first question and the most important, of course. 
Technical analysis gives the answer by uh, adding uh, bullish and bearish arguments. So for, if you have more bullish than bearish arguments, uh, your analysis should be, uh, should be bullish. For example, if you have a, a, a rising trend on, on, the, on an asset plus uh, moving averages, uh, with rising moving averages and uh, a MACD positive, positively oriented, uh, you have several bullish arguments to say that uh, your analysis is bullish. And conversely, if you have more bearish than bullish argument, your, anal your analysis should be bearish. For example, if you have a, a, a declining trend line with declining moving averages and a, a bearish trend line on the daily RSI, you, I would say uh, your, your, your analysis should be bearish because you have a lot of bearish developments. So this is the key elements for a successful uh, strategy. The first one, for sure, is, is it bullish or bearish? But the second very important question you have to ask you is, uh, is about money management. Uh, the question is, was this set my pivot point, my stop loss? And considering this pivot point, I like an interesting reward risk ratio. Uh, so actually, this question refers to, to, to money management rules which are essential for every traders and investors who want to, to survive in financial markets. So regarding money management, so as I said, money management is essential for every traders and investors who want to survive in financial markets. Of course, losses need to be limited if, you, if your outlook proves to be wrong, because you cannot have 100% of winner trade. So your potential loss when you define your, your trading strategy must be limited. So the, is it a second rule uh, I, I, I have to, to give you? Um, this, the, the third rule is a reward risk ratio is a crucial step when you define your, your trading strategy because it determines if your trade idea is interesting or not. Uh, so it's very easy to understand the choice of, uh, of stop loss, uh, of the choice of your pivot point, allow to handle your reward risk ratio. So your stop loss, your pivot point, has to be a key technical level. So I'm talking about pivot points, so I need to, to define what is a pivot point at Trading Central. So I think you noted I use the term uh, the term pivot point when I talk about stop loss, actually you should use your pivot point for, for your stop loss because a pivot point is a key technical level where we would turn bullish from bearish or bearish from bullish. So when you choose a relevant pivot point for your stop loss, you should have no regret if your position is top out. So, you can see on several websites uh, several mathematical formulas to calculate a pivot point. And there is no one way for calculating pivot points. But for us at Trading Central, uh, I want to insist on that, uh, a key pivot point is a key, uh, is a key technical level. So we favor the use of Fibonacci levels, uh, Fibonacci levels, uh, along with classical technical levels like uh, gaps, the previous low or previous high, uh, or trend lines, or horizontal support, or horizontal resistance. So, if you uh, if you had several arguments on a specific point, specific level, like a, a key retracement, a key Fibonacci retracement, plus, uh, for example, a, a moving average, plus a rising trend line, uh, you you have a key a key, a key a key level, a key pivot point, and you will you, you will be able to to define a, an interesting uh, trading strategy. So I insist on the fact that the pivot point should be the most important level, as it should be your stop loss when you define your trading your trading plan. So I have chosen uh, an example on a Russell 2000. Russell 2000. So on the Russell 2000, but uh, I have a daily chart. We have a daily chart. I show the daily chart on the Russell 2000, but uh, the time frame and the asset don't matter in this uh, example. 
You can apply this example for an intraday chart, for a weekly chart, for a stock and currency, and currency, uh, currency pair. So uh, the, the, the time frame uh, is not important. You, you, can, you can do the same on an intraday chart on uh, the, the euro dollar, for example. So let's start with, uh, with this example. Uh, we are on uh, October 9th. You can see that the, despite the consolidation, uh, the index is still supported by a key rising trend line drawn from uh, November 2012. And at the same time, the dairy RSI is approaching a support. So we've, uh, we have uh, several bullish arguments to say that the outlook is bullish, and despite the, the consolidation we can see just there. Uh, the, the outlook is still bullish, so the traders, the investor, uh, should look for uh, to enter a, a long position on the Russell 2000. In this example, a key pivot, a key pivot point can be set at 10.36. Uh, in this example, 10.36 is a 61.8 Fibonacci retracement, plus a key rising trend line the key rising trend line I mentioned, which was uh, which is run from the bottom of November 2012. So we have two arguments to say that 1036 is a key pivot point and should be a key stop loss. But now uh, it's not sufficient to say uh, yes, it's bullish and uh, I, I, I want to, to buy the, the index. Uh, I have to, to determine if the reward risk ratio is interesting. So in this example, the current price is at 10.43, uh, and the first target can be set at 10.88. Actually, 10.88 is the previous high on the index, so if it's a, a previous high, should be a resistance. And a second target uh, at 11.30. Uh, the 11.30, uh, this example, is a full projection the full projection of this up move projected from the bottom at 107. Okay, so the theoretical target on this example should be 11.30. So, with the considering these elements, uh, the reward risk ratio uh, is interesting, it's good at current price at 10.43. Other risk is uh, 7 points uh, loss, as the stop loss is at 10.36, and the potential reward uh, is at is, uh, 66 points gain. So in this example, uh, if you want to enter a long position at 10.43, uh, your key stop loss is at 10.36, so it's, it's, a limited, uh, it's, it's a limited loss if, you, if, your, if your outlook is wrong. And, uh, the, the potential reward is very interesting uh, with a 66 point gain. So, that case to enter right now at 10.43 on October 9th, uh, 2013, is, is interesting uh, regarding uh, money management and technical analysis. So, we can enter a long position at 10.43. What happened afterwards? On October 30th. Um, on October 30, the, the index has reached our first target, which was at 1088. Sorry. So it was the first target, was the first uh, resistance, but uh, uh, the, the, the index has broken above this, uh, this resistance and continued to, 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 to accelerate in the upside. And now the index on October 30 is close to its second target uh, I mentioned at 11.30. But now uh, on uh, October 30, the index is reversing down and, uh, and it didn't reach the second target at 11.30. So what we can do on, on October 30 in order to protect gains, um, you need to raise your, your stop. It's not stop loss because if you raise the stops, you will be... Uh, you will have a winner trade, but uh, you need to write your stop, uh, and uh, this stop should be a trailing stop. Uh, the, the idea is uh, to cut losses short and let profit run. So as long as the index remains above uh, key support, you, 
you don't have any reason to, to cut your long position. So you play the trend, the trend, uh, uh, you play the trend as long as the, the, the index remains above a key, a key support. Now, uh, in, this, uh, in, in this example, on October 30, the new, uh, the new stop loss, the new pivot point could be, should be more aggressive uh, than the previous one because you are, you have uh, a positive, uh, a positive uh, long position. So the current price in this example is at 11.05, and the stop, and the new stop can be set at 10.87 because 10.87 uh, in October, on October 30, is an horizontal support and the rising 20 day moving average which is in red in this example. So in order to protect you again you can rise the stop with a trailing stop and you can rise the stop to 10, 10 10.87 in case of a, a more aggressive pullback on the index and in order to protect your, your gains. What happened after October 13? November 70. Uh, November 70, uh, the stop we, which was uh, raised to 10.87 has been reached. So uh, your long position uh, should be cut. And, uh, and you again, uh, if you buy at 10.43 uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the example, uh, your gain should be 44 points gain. So, uh, but now the index has broken below the stop, it was set at 1087, and your gain is 44 points. Uh, the main goal is not to try to sell, I want to insist on that, the main goal is not to try to sell at the highest level, but to try to catch the trend as long as possible. So you have to keep in mind to cut losses short and let profit rest uh, in order to, to play the trend uh, the, 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 the maximum upward potential of the trend. But in that case, you are stopped out, but uh, you are stopped out with a gain. November 8, what is the new scenario? What is the, what is the, the, the trading plan you can, uh, you can, you, you, you can do? Uh, the index is still supported by a, a rising trend line drawn from the November 2012. So this is a first bullish argument. On the daily RSI, you have a rising, rising trend line. So this is a second bullish argument. And we have also rising moving averages. So 20 day in red and the 50 day moving average in blue. So from a technical, uh, technical analysis point of view, the Russell 2000 is bullish. It's still bullish. The outlook is still mm. bullish. But at 10.97, the question is, at, uh, can I buy Russell 2000 at 10.97, considering our key pivot point or key stop loss at 10.63? Uh, the answer, the answer is no, uh, because despite these key uh, key bullish arguments, uh, the reward risk ratio is not good is not good enough at current price, as if you calculate between 10.97 and 10.63, the, the risk is a 34 point loss and the potential reward is a 50 point gain. So if you, if you apply the, the reward risk ratio, the reward risk ratio is not interesting and the potential, uh, potential loss is too important. So despite uh, the fact you have a lot of bullish arguments, from um, uh, money management point of view, you can enter a long position. So this is important to, to keep this in mind. Uh, it's not sufficient to have uh, a bullish configuration or bearish configuration uh, from a technical analysis uh, point of view. You have to, to keep uh, in mind that uh, money management is really important to, to survive in financial market. And uh, it's better to, 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 to to, to let the, the trend uh, playing without without you uh, instead of to take the risk of a, a larger a larger loss. So to sum up, before uh, to provide you a fresh analysis on uh, two or three currency pairs, I want just a quick sum up to show you a quick sum up. 
So to sum up, uh, the choice of a key pivot point, so key stop loss, is important. It must be a key technical level. Keep that in mind. So it's a, it's a sum up of my rules. So the choice of a key pivot point stop loss is important. The second rule should be the trend is your friend. And keep in mind that bottom fishing is risky. You need to have uh, several bullish technical developments before buying, buying, and you need to have several bearish technical developments before selling. The third rule should be uh, that, and I think it's the most important, losses need to be limited if your outlook proves to be wrong. And keep in mind the, the, the reward risk ratio. It's very important. And uh, of course, money management is essential for every trader, investors who want to survive in financial markets. So, uh, this is a quick presentation, but I wanted also to, to, to present you some analysis with uh, uh, live, uh, with live examples on currency pairs like euro dollar or Canadian dollar. So I'm going to share my screen with my technical analysis platform. Maybe uh, could be interesting to have some some question uh, regarding forex uh, currency pairs. Uh, I'm going to present uh, maybe euro dollar, an example of euro dollar, uh, Canadian dollar, but uh, if uh, some person have also another, another question on, on other currency pairs, uh, maybe it could be interesting to, to ask me. So the first one I wanted to show you is the euro dollar. So in, for, for now, euro dollar, we have several, despite the current consolidation, despite the current consolidation, we have still uh, several bullish, uh, several uh, positive arguments. For example, the daily RSI is approaching, sorry is approaching a key support area, which is set around 30. The daily MACD is approaching a tentative rising trend line. And we have also on the daily, on the daily chart, this is a daily chart on your, of the euro dollar. You have, uh, you, you have still the 50-day moving average, the 100-day moving average, the 200-day moving average, which are still rising. So we have uh, we have still several bullish uh, arguments to on the euro dollar despite the current consolidation. If you look at a weekly chart, we have also an interesting, uh, interesting, interesting configuration, technical configuration. As you can see, that the euro dollar has broken above a key declining trend line, which was uh, which was in place since 2011, in May 2011. We have also a key rising trend line on the weekly MACD and on the weekly RSI. So we have several bullish arguments, bullish developments on the daily chart and on the weekly chart. But now, uh, now regarding money management, if you look at the euro dollar, I think could be interesting if you have a look at Fibonacci retracements. That actually the euro dollar is bouncing off the 50% Fibonacci retracement. So, uh, and this 50% retracement is also the rising 20 week moving average that I show you on the weekly chart. So, this 50% Fibonacci retracement at what 32, uh, 30 to 90 is a key pivot point because it's a is the 50% Fibonacci retracement and the rising 20 week moving average. So, uh, if you want to enter a long position with all bullish mm -hmm. arguments uh, I mentioned, your stop loss should be at 132.90 because it's a key stop loss, it's a key pivot point. And first target could be. Uh, The declining 20 day moving average, which is coming around 136.08 right now, and uh, come back, you can expect to come back to the previous, uh, the previous high 
at 138.32. We have several bullish, the, several bullish arguments, but we have also uh, an interesting reward risk ratio. So the timing uh, seems to be interesting on euro dollar right now, uh, as we as we have a bullish configuration and a good uh, a good uh, and we respect uh, our money management rules. So that's it for the euro dollar. Uh, I think I saw uh, an interesting configuration also on the Canadian dollar versus um, Japanese yen, which is very interesting with a good reward risk ratio. Actually, uh, the Japanese yen is interesting against a lot of uh, a lot of uh, counterparts. Uh, but the Cadian is on the weekly chart is very very interesting um, because on the weekly chart uh, the, 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 the pair is uh, is shaping a, a triangle. It's not validated yet, but it's shaping a triangle and should be uh, if we have the validation of this triangle a continuation pattern. And uh, you can see that in late 2012 uh, the, the pair has broken above a key declining trend line uh, or turning the, the, the medium term uh, outlook bullish but now we have we have a rising trend line on the daily chart we are on the daily chart right now okay and I think this rising trend line could be an interesting pivot point. So, to sum up, we have a rising trend line on the daily chart, and we have the we are on a weak chart right now, and we have the rising 50 week moving average, which is coming around. Uh, the rising trend line we have on the daily chart. So I think we have two arguments to say that uh, our rising trend line is a key pivot point, could be a key pivot point if you want to enter a long position on, on Canadian dollar uh, against yen, Japanese yen. And I think the pivot point could be set around 93. 93. And I think the first target could be. I think there is an horizontal resistance around 97.50 and the second target could be around 101. So in this situation uh, we have uh, an interesting pivot points not too far from the last price and we have interesting targets. So as for the, the euro dollar I think the timing could be uh, interesting. Uh, on uh, on Cadian to enter a long position with uh, uh, and we respect uh, if you want to enter a long position you you respect the man money management rules so this is also an interesting configuration first uh, I have something interesting on, uh, on on euro versus British pound. Uh, not on a daily chart because it's it's unclear on daily chart. But if you have a look on a monthly and a weekly chart, you can see that the technical configuration is becoming more and more interesting. So on a sorry, it's not a good chart. So if you have a look on monthly charts on the, the uh, euro against British pound, we have uh, several uh, interesting patterns. Uh, first, the first interesting pattern is a reverse head and shoulders pattern. Okay, so the pattern is validated and has been validated in uh, late 
2007. So the big picture uh, on the currency pair is bullish, but uh, but uh, since 2009 we are uh, in consolidation mode after the strong uh, the strong bullish run uh, observed uh, seen uh, between 2007 and 2009. So. Uh, for, I think for several investors, several uh, traders, uh, the, the technical configuration uh, seems to be not very clear. But if you have a look on the chart, you can see that uh, we have more and more bullish arguments on a monthly chart and on a weekly chart. The first on, on the bullish on a monthly chart is the 20 uh, months moving average, which is turning up. It's the first time I think since uh, 2010. After the the, the 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 last pullback, actually the last pullback, I think the last pullback is meant uh, to enter long position. So uh, we have uh, an interesting reaction on the on the, two, uh, two, on the twenty months moving average, and you can see on the monthly chart that the that the pair is shaping uh, a bullish flag. It's a large bullish bullish flag, but on the monthly chart you can see uh, you can see the, this pattern uh, like. Uh, like a bullish, uh, a bullish flag pattern. So should be a continuation pattern, and I think, uh, and I think, around uh, uh, 88 could be the, the could be an interesting trigger for a bullish acceleration. But now, if we consider our money money management rules on the weekly chart, sorry. So right now you can you can see that we have an interesting consolidation with an A B C consolidation, uh, while the weekly MACD is uh, is approaching a support area around uh, zero. And the most uh, interesting thing is the uh, 100 week moving average, which is acting uh, as a support. And this uh, 100 week moving average is turning up now. So uh, we have several arguments to say that the low uh, at uh, the low, sorry, let me check. The low at uh, 0 0.83 uh, could be an interesting bottom and could be an interesting pivot point, an interesting stop loss. So considering uh, 0 0.83 uh, uh, as, uh, for your for your stop loss, uh, with the first target around uh, 0.87, actually 0 0.87 uh, should be a key, a, key, a key trigger for a bullish acceleration. But at now at last price at, at uh, 0 0.84, uh, 84, sorry, uh, the reward risk ratio is interesting with a stop loss at 0 0.83 and a key, uh, a, key, uh, key, a key first target at 0 0.87. In case of a break above uh, 0 0.87, I think we could see a bullish acceleration to at least 0 0.9083. Okay, so we have a third interesting config technical configuration on, uh, on the euro versus British pound, and uh, and the and we, uh, which uh, which uh, sorry respect our money management rules uh, and which respect our, our technical analysis tools. So uh, this is a third interesting example. If you want to enter a long position on the forex market, and I think uh, we have time to see another chart on um, which one? USD, uh, US dollar against Canadian dollar. Uh, yes, maybe it's not the best one. 
Uh, so another one. Uh, on uh, US dollar against Japanese yen, sorry. It's a better calculation. Oops, sorry, I am gone. Okay, sorry. So on the weekly chart, on the US dollar against Japanese yen, we have the relation of uh, Turn-on pattern. If you have a look at the weekly chart, so it is a continuation pattern, a bullish continuation pattern in that case. And uh, if you have a look at the weekly chart regarding uh, technical analysis, you have a rising trend line on the weekly MACD and a rising trend line on the weekly RSI. So this is two arguments to say that the, the pair is, is in a bullish configuration, and the 20-week moving average is turning up after the validation of the penal pattern. So, from a technical analysis point of view, the, uh, the, the currency pair is, is, is turning bullish again. And now, if you want to enter a long position, you have to determine a key pivot point. And I think the key pivot point could be set on the rising trend line. We can see on the weak chart, which corresponds actually to the rising 200 days moving average on a daily chart. So, to, 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 to build an interesting trading strategy on, do, on dollar against Japanese yen, the US dollar against Japanese yen, you can, regarding money management, you can enter a long position now with a, a key stop loss around 97.50 in order to target the first target, which was the previous high of May 2013, which was at 103.75, and could, should be the first target, and I think a second target could be in case of uh, the pre in, uh, in case of uh, an upside breakout of the previous high, the second target could be. On the monthly chart, could be 105.60, which is actually 61.8 Fibonacci retracement of the entire decline uh, started in 2000, 2007 to the, to the bottom of 2011. So, in that configuration, we have also interesting, uh, interesting trading strategy with. A good reward, reward risk ratio and an interesting technical analysis. So I think that's it for me regarding uh, uh, examples and, uh, and how to build a, a trading strategy. Maybe there are some questions uh, from your side. Maybe we, we have time to focus on another pair, on another currency pair. So I told you that, that I saw an interesting configuration on the user against Canadian dollar. So we have just time to see that configuration. Yes, I saw that earlier today uh, because today we had an uh, interesting reaction, the reaction on, uh, on the declining trend line uh, drawn from the top of uh, Ju July 2013. So in that example, uh, despite the, the current market consolidation on, uh, against this declining trend line, you can not enter a long, uh, short position just with one argument, because the only argument I have on this example is this declining trend line, which is just a tentative declining trend line within a confirmation of this declining trend line, and uh, 
if you have a look at other technical indicators like moving averages or daily MACD, you can see that these indicators are still bullish. So uh, we have just one or two bearish arguments uh, against several bullish arguments. So in that case, if you want to have a short position, uh, you can, but you have to put a, a very uh, close stop loss. I mean, a stop loss just above the declining trend line, which is coming around uh, 105.15. But regarding technical analysis, you don't have sufficient argument to 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 enter a short position. So in that example, um, you can you can see that uh, you need to have a maximum of bullish or bearish uh, arguments to enter a long position. But you can enter. Uh, you can enter a position if you have a very uh, a very close stop loss in order to in order to respect money management rules. Okay, so that's it for presentation. Um, I hope it was clear an idea, and I hope to see you soon. Thank you for your attention.